So today I thought I'd talk you through my process for creating my new fungi vintage style print. Which you can see the finished version a little in the background on my screen there. I talked about it in my last video that I was in the midst of creating it but, but wasn't happy with how it was going. So I decided to give myself a bit longer to fix those errors and to try and recognise what I wasn't happy with in the piece. So I gave myself that time and I'm really glad I did now because not only did I end up creating a quick piece in the meantime that I really liked to make up for the print that I wasn't posting, but I'm also much happier with the edits that I've made and how the final piece has turned out now. It just really wasn't sitting right with me before, so I'm glad I gave myself that time. If you're new here and you haven't seen my moon print before, this is what it looks like. It was inspired by a lot of old vintage illustrations that I'd seen and I also was gaining a keen interest in all things kind of biology surrounding that. I did think about studying at one point, going back and studying biology, maybe in the future, we'll see. But something I particularly liked when taking an interest in all things sciencey is old scientific illustrations. I just completely fell in love with some of the art that I came across whilst learning about sciencey things. So for example, one of my favourite books that I've come across, which I have had a copy bought for me because I really wanted it um, for Christmas or something like that, um, is this Ernst Hackel, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Ernst Hackel book. I've only read the beginning of this and I really need to get back into reading this because it is such a beautiful book. Just the inside cover is absolutely gorgeous. But he was a marine biologist, zoologist, I think he did a bit of philosophy, um, but also an artist, an absolutely amazing artist. And just looking at things like this inspired me to create some things that were a bit more vintagey style and also wanted to create things inspired by the natural world as well. And another thing looking at scientific illustrations that I really liked was the images or illustrations um, that are within the text that have the little figure number that correlate to what the text is talking about. So it said figure one and then it'll say figure one within the text so that you know which picture it's talking about in the text. So I really liked that. I don't know why, just those little figure one, fig two, fig three um, that I saw within scientific texts next to the photos and illustrations. So that was something I wanted to incorporate as well, which I have been doing. And handwriting all those little letters and numbers has been something very different from what I've done before and very fun. So anyway, that is where the moon print first came from. It was an amalgamation of different interests, so I wanted something a bit vintagey, something a bit sciencey, but also keeping that kind of fun side to it. Something slightly, I wouldn't say creepy, eerie maybe, I like to have something slightly off in my drawings, maybe eerie is the right word, but also having that kind of caricature cartoony style that I have as well, whilst also wanting to incorporate patterns into my work which I'd not really studied much before, which is something I'd seen in a lot of scientific illustrations. Let's see if I can find a page quickly, such as this. But I absolutely love the patterns within scientific illustration, especially of marine life, which is what Ernst Hackle um, focuses on. So like I said, the idea for the moon print was a combination of all those things, the little fig one, fig two, fig three, under the squares, but also the squares kind of representing different things within the topic. So the first one, like I said, was moon. So I wanted to have some with textures, like I've seen in the scientific illustrations of the moon's surface, but also balancing up with some of the quirkier characters and faces that I like to do as well. So yeah, that's where that all started. Um, and I've really been enjoying doing that. And, and it's definitely created a new interest in art for me that was waning a little the last few years, unfortunately. But I think putting all these interests together has really helped to make me want to create again. So after I created the moon print, I decided that I wanted to create a series. So each would be in the same format, um, but on different topics. So the first one was moon, and I did put a poll on Instagram to see what the next one should be. Um, so the options were fungi, I think it was ocean or marine life because that's um, something that I'm really fascinated with is marine life. And I think it was like flora, uh, flowers. Um, there might have been one more, but I can't remember. But fungi won by quite a lot. I think um, marine life might have been like second, but fungi won by a lot. 
which I was kind of thinking it would do to be honest. So I designed that quite a while ago and then was struggling to create art still even after I'd created some things that I really liked. Um, we're still struggling to get that kind of passion back but I did design the first kind of draft for what I wanted to do for the fungi print. I ended up redoing a couple of the designs within that print but you'll see that within the process although I didn't film the last bit but anyway we'll get to that when we get to that. I thought I'd just take you through step by step what I do to create a piece like this. So to begin with I draft everything digitally. I don't know if that's because I've done digital for so long that that's that, that was my main way of creating art um, and I felt very uncomfortable doing traditional art because I was so used to the digital process. But I also think I just like the control to experiment digitally. Being able to move things around and to rub things out and redraw things and layer things uh, really helps when you're not really sure what you want to draw and you can just keep going over and over again without wasting paper and also gives you the tools to mess around the colours and the sizes and um, I just think it's a great tool for designing and drafting. So once it's been designed digitally I usually try to work out as much as I can digitally um, so that I'm not making a mess when I'm doing the physical drawing but it depends how much patience I have sometimes if I really can't figure something out I'll, I'll just be like I'll figure it out once I'm doing it um, but majority of the time it is better for me if I spend my time detailing the design digitally but I transfer that from the iPad onto watercolour paper and actually for this format of print I don't do it in one go on one piece of paper I actually split it up I do that because it takes the pressure off having to paint everything as I'd like it to be painted um, on one piece of paper without getting something wrong and having to restart it again. I also don't have a scanner big enough to scan in a paper size that I would need to do all the details for all the squares um, if I was going to do it all on one page set out as I set it out in the end. Um, so I split it up, um, scanned them separately and then I put everything together digitally at the end. So I'll try to fit as much onto one sheet of paper as possible just so I'm not wasting paper as I am using a high quality paper now so I am spending more on this paper so I am being more careful than I ever have been with the paper. <laughs> So it's obviously more frustrating when something doesn't come out how I wanted it to, but you just can't help that sometimes. It does make me focus more on the piece that I'm doing, knowing that I really don't want to do another version of it if I can help it though. So the moon print was painted in grey tones and is a mainly black and white image on a slightly yellowy um, background to give that vintage old paper feel like a piece of paper that you found in an attic that's yellowed slowly over time. But I painted that in black and white and grey tones because it was referencing the moon so I think that works for that piece and I really do enjoy painting black and white more than I thought I ever would. I never did black and white images when I was painting digitally but it's something that I've really started enjoying um, doing traditional work. But I wanted uh, the next piece to look a bit different. I didn't want them to all look too much the same. Obviously the format, the layout is going to be the same, but I wanted them to stand out on their own as well, not all look replicas of each other. So I decided to do this piece in colour, which I knew was going to be more of a challenge because I still don't feel like the colours that I paint ever turn out how I plan them digitally or have them in my mind and they're something that I end up having to do a lot of editing with digitally afterwards in Photoshop which I don't mind too much but obviously I'd like to have more control over the colours in my paintings without having to do that heavier work digitally. I knew as I was painting this that there were a couple of pieces that I wasn't happy with how they were really coming out with but I did think that I'd but I did think I'd be able to fix that um, in Photoshop afterwards and thought they wouldn't be too much of a problem. Plus I was trying to save on paper and really didn't want to repaint anything. So I pushed through with them hoping for the best and spent many hours editing it digitally. So that includes scanning each page or painting twice, uh, putting it on the scanner one way and then turning it around put it on the scanner the other way. Um, I do that because I don't like to have too much paper texture in my art. I prefer for the actual paper that I print onto to be the texture 
rather than the texture being printed onto it. Um, the first time that I actually scanned in a watercolour piece and printed it off I realised how clear the texture comes through and I didn't and it didn't work for my style. I prefer the I prefer to buy textured paper and for that to be doing the heavy lifting in that way. Um, so by scanning it twice, once one way and then turning it around the other and then layering them on top of each other in Photoshop, the texture actually cancels itself out because of the way that the light's moving across the scanner. The highlights and the shadows cancel each other out so you have a less textured background than you did originally. Unfortunately, for some reason, it's really hard to match them up. There is an Align Layers tool on Photoshop, but I find that it never works. It has not worked for me once. It's always majorly out, not just even a little out, it's always really out and very obviously not aligned and align it manually um, bit by bit. So that takes a while to do for each piece before I even start editing the colours etc. So I put all of them together onto one page, lay them out how I'd like them to look and then start editing the colours. I don't get too much into the details at the beginning, I just kind of want to see the layout so I don't really go with the extras that I also put onto this which you will see are just little extra watercolour splashes and um, little pencil drawings and the writing bits that I put around the main paintings to create the piece to make it look like it's doodled on and accidentally had water tipped over it and paint tipped over it. I just think it gives a charming kind of style, makes it look a little older and kind of gives it like a personal touch as well. But I'll leave those kind of details till a little later. I really found with this piece, because it was in colour, I was struggling to balance the colours and the tones within the image with so many different sections and so many different paintings. And I couldn't work it out if they weren't working together or if it was too much of one tone or one colour, as it was mainly orange, red, brown tones. And it was feeling maybe a little flat to me. But I was also realising that there was a couple of the paintings that just really really weren't working for me. So after spending a couple of days editing it, like I said, um, I, I decided that I wanted to redo some bits. Um, so I actually didn't film this portion as I felt like I needed the space physically um, and mentally to experiment without having to worry about turning the camera on and off every few minutes and I thought it's only a couple of extra pieces that I'll be adding on anyway and I was running out of time so I needed to be quick and to just let my mind focus on that rather than anything else. Um, so yeah I didn't video this last bit but I decided to repaint two of the sections. The top middle square which I thought the painting just wasn't working, the design wasn't working, it felt messy to me, unclear as to what it was and just didn't stand as a piece by itself. Um, at all and I felt it was definitely the weakest of the bunch so I not only wanted to repaint that but wanted to re redesign it and then the other section that I wanted to redo was the very middle section so on my moon print the middle section is the moon face and it's one of my favourite parts of the print and I've used it separately for logos etc um, and I think it stands out by itself and pulls the rest of the piece in together. But I felt like with this print, there wasn't really any interest to the middle piece. It was, wasn't was very quirky. There were more interesting things around it. So your eye wasn't going there first, which I don't really like, so it feels like there's just a blank space in the middle of the page, even though there is something there, but because there's no interest there, it feels very blank to me and flat and therefore unbalanced. I decided that not only wanted to repaint that bit as well, but also redesign it completely. But I like the idea of having the full mushrooms in the middle and more than one mushroom, but I just needed to rethink how I was going to do it. Um, so I quickly redrafted a design, which was this, um, which I did on my iPad on Procreate again. And because I was running out of time, I didn't really spend too much time putting loads of detail into designs. I just needed rough ideas so I literally did this before I went to sleep in bed one night um, because I knew I wanted to paint the day after. So these were the quick rough drafts that I came up with for my idea but also had the idea whilst I was doing that 
um, that to break up the colour problem that I was having with it looking very orangey, very red, that to have the contrasting colour green in it might help break that up a little. So I felt these pieces were much more eye-catching, much more unique than what they were before. I felt like the middle piece brought more interest to the eye than it did before and pulled the other pieces together with it. So the next day, which was actually yesterday, I painted these pieces, which went pretty successful. There were a couple of things I knew I wanted to edit. Um, digitally but mostly I was pretty happy with how it was coming out at that point. I had a lot of space left on the paper so so I had the new square on the sheet of watercolour paper, the new middle section, I also added the leaves and vines that I was thinking of adding um, and painting them green but I also decided to just do a few little watercolour splodges in the shapes of mushrooms and in the textures of mushrooms and just some random blotches as well that I could also add to the print because I felt like there wasn't enough of what I'd done before for the extra bits. I felt like it needed more and I felt like it needed more watercolour based textures rather than just the pencil. So I scanned them in, um, aligned them as much as I could, the two scans, then started adding them to the piece that I'd already started editing. This was much more complicated than I thought it was going to be. I don't think I've had a piece in a while, um, a Photoshop file that's got so many layers affecting so many things underneath it and affecting all the colours etc. Um, so adding these bits in and removing the other bits was a little difficult and I knew it was going to take some time to fix that because um, a lot of the layers above the paintings were working around the layers and fit perfectly into what I'd already done so I had to go through and adjust all of them to work for the new ones that I had. So that wasn't too difficult, it was just um, a lot of time. And then I added the extra bits in and felt like even though I wasn't adding a lot of green, um, not as much as I'd put in on the digital draft anyway, I preferred the subtlety of the green and still felt like it helped to break the colours up and give your eyes a rest from the red throughout the image. So I was really happy with that. I sat up till quite late last night doing that and was basically done with it. I was like, no, I think this is finished. Um, but thought I'll sleep on it and have a look in the morning to see what I think. So it was actually this morning I was about to print it off and was like, the colours still aren't working for me. So I spent um, only about an hour probably trying to fix the colours. I couldn't work out why they weren't working so it was a lot of trial and error trying to balance out the colours but not just the colours but also the tones and the, the darks and lights um, trying to balance them out throughout the image so that the image flowed nicely. I spent time this morning trying to work out what was wrong. Still not sure what I wasn't enjoying with it but I did manage to get it to a place that I like now. So I did some test prints then on just normal plain paper, printer paper, just to check the colours of printing how I wanted them to. I have a pretty good understanding now of how my printer works and how I need to edit it to get the print to come out how it looks digitally on the screen. So I noticed make a lot of the prints slightly more yellow um, on the hue saturation tool on Photoshop because my printer likes to print things slightly more purpley. But I like to do the tests anyway just to make sure it's coming out how I want to and it took me three tries uh, until I was happy with it. So then I decided to finally actually print it on my textured print paper. That's always a little nerve-wracking because I also have invested in some high quality print paper, something that works well with my printer and is nicely textured and is a thicker paper which I prefer and a nice matte texture as well which I like and I prefer over anything glossy because I think it goes with the vintage style more and also goes with the more traditional style of painting. I like my prints to look a little like they've actually been drawn themselves and that onto that actual paper. I was nervous about printing it in case I wasted a whole sheet of A3 paper but I'm actually really happy with how it came out and here it is. So this is my fungi print in my vintage squares style. I don't really know what to call it. I probably should come up with a word or a phrase for this series because I definitely want to do more of them. So please let me know in the comments below if there's any topics or genres that you'd like to see depicted in this format. Like I said before, I was thinking of doing like marine life, ocean life, um, or flowers. So if there are any other things in that realm, in the kind of nature world, 
um, or sciencey world or whatever you think would fit in this format I'd love to hear your ideas because I really do enjoy making these they're so different from what I used to do with my digital character designs and it feels much more me and where I'm at in life now um, with the interests that I have so yeah I hope you like this video where I kind of talk through my process properly in a way rather than just the footage of what I'm doing this creating this piece feels like a whole process in itself separate from any other watercolors I do so I thought it'd be interesting to kind of walk through it just for myself to realize what works for me and what doesn't work for me uh, within the process and sometimes talking things out um, helps you realise why things aren't working or why things are working. So obviously I'm still very new to this, I still feel slightly awkward, still trying to think of ideas of what I can create. So if you have anything that you would like to see please let me know as well um, and obviously like I said before please let me know if you have any ideas for this format of print, I'd really like to hear them. Um, and this print will be available on my shop, I do A5, A4 and A3 sizes in this matte texture paper. So I've quite enjoyed talking about this, I uh, hope you have enjoyed listening to it and I will see you in my next video.